Hello, Internet. Chris Baker here from LuckyGunner.com. Do you need a red dot sight on your carry pistol? The main barrier to entry used to be cost, but the price of reliable red dot optics has dropped significantly in the last couple of years. And lots of affordable handguns now come from the factory with slides already cut to accept optics. So, if you have not already, is now the time to finally take the plunge into the world of the DOT equipped pistol. Are you missing out on being as prepared as you can possibly be if you don't have one of these on your personal defensive handgun? Well, I cannot answer those questions for you, but I do want to talk about a few issues to consider that might help you decide. Now, right up front, I need to point out that I am far from an expert on the topic of pistol optics. I still consider myself relatively new to this. If you have been following me for a while, then you probably already know that the vast majority of my experience with pistol optics has been over the last year with this gun. It is a SIG P365 XL. I am not going to go a whole lot into specific hardware today, but since I know some of you will ask, I have used it with a Shield RMSC, a Sig Romeo Zero, a Swamp Fox Sentinel, and a Hollow Sun HS507K. For what it's worth, I think the Swamp Fox and the Hollow Sun uh, have been the best two by far out of that batch. Uh, anyway, I am usually pretty good at offering a perspective that makes sense for the regular everyday citizen who just happens to be armed, but I am not an accomplished red dot instructor. If you are looking for some solid tips on actually shooting optic equipped handguns, you should look up Scott Jedlinski or Steve Fisher or Aaron Cohen or one of the many other guys who have been actually teaching this stuff professionally. Now to start off our discussion for today, let's focus just on the advantages of a red dot. So forget about cost, durability, holster compatibility, any of those other related issues for now. When you narrow it down to simply making holes exactly where you want them as fast as you possibly can, there is no question a red dot is superior to iron sights. Now that doesn't mean everybody always shoots optics better than irons. There is some learning involved uh, and there are some special cases like people with uh, stigmatism who might have some issues with the dot. But in general, given the right guidance and adequate time practicing, the evidence seems to indicate that the overwhelming majority of shooters perform better with a red dot. There are a lot of reasons why that's the case, but it basically comes down to the fact that a dot sight more naturally integrates with how our eyes and our brains normally function. We can keep our vision and our attention focused on the target and simply superimpose the dot over that. It's not an abstraction of our point of impact represented by lining up squares or circles like iron sights. The dot is just more intuitive and less work for our brains and our eyeballs to do. Now, what that means in terms of shooting performance is different from one person to the next. Someone who has the kind of vision issues where they can see a red dot really well, but they have trouble seeing iron sights, they might experience some huge improvements in their marksmanship ability almost immediately. On the other hand, a shooter who is already performing at an extremely high level with iron sights, they might not benefit as much from a red dot right away, or the benefits might be more situational. Now, I can only speak for myself here, but I don't think my experience is particularly unique. The first and most dramatic benefit I noticed when shooting a red dot on a pistol was shooting at 15 yards and beyond. The difference there really is night and day. I don't think it's exaggerating to say that I can almost cut my group sizes and my times in half when I'm shooting drills at 25 yards and beyond with a red dot. Now inside of about 15 yards, the performance starts to kind of even out a bit and the red dot advantage is less noticeable. Statistically, the majority of defensive shootings do take place at really close ranges, like seven yards or less. So it's totally fair to ask whether the benefits of the red dot really translate to the real world. I think the advantage that's probably most relevant to the armed citizen is that the dot allows you to stay target focused. We don't always realize the full benefits of being target focused when we're just uh, shooting at the range 
it might help with some things like target transitions, but generally when you're shooting static cardboard and paper, there's not necessarily a massive advantage. But in a violent confrontation, seeing the site without compromising your visual attention on the threat has some huge benefits. We don't have any real world data on this that I'm aware of. It's kind of hard to quantify. The best hard evidence I've seen so far comes from the white paper that Aaron Cohen from Sage Dynamics published a few years ago. As part of his extensive red dot site testing, he ran 24 students through a few force on force scenarios. Half of them had red dot sites on their SIM guns, half of them had iron sights. Each group on average had a similar level of skill, training, and shooting experience. There was not a big difference in the number of rounds fired by the two groups, but the iron sight shooters missed completely about 41% of the time. The red dot shooters only missed 27% of their shots. But here's the big stat that stands out to me. The iron sight shooters landed 28% of their hits in the head or the upper chest, what we would typically consider good hits. For the red dot shooters, that number was 70%. Now that's just one study and uh, it was with a pretty small sample size. I would love to see more studies like that in the future and I am sure there's a lot more research being done on this topic as we speak. For the time being, I have seen enough to convince me that the real world benefits of a red dot on a pistol are probably not just theoretical. Even with that in mind, I am reluctant to say that you need a red dot sight on your carry gun. There are some downsides. I think a lot of the most common criticisms of pistol red dot sights are overblown. Things like durability or battery life are kind of minor issues at this point if you're careful about hardware selection, but there are some challenges involved in transitioning from iron sights to a red dot that I think deserve some attention. I wanna talk about two of the biggest of these challenges today. One is a hardware issue simply figuring out which pistol to mount an optic to and what method to use to mount it. That seems like it should be easy, but it's often not. The other big challenge is more of a software or training issue, and that is learning how to find the dot when you're shooting. So let's actually tackle that one first. In particular, it's the presentation that's often the tough part, getting the gun on target, either from the holster or from some kind of ready position, the shooter looks through the window and they don't see the dot right away. They have to move the gun around and hunt for it. This problem is unique to pistol optics. With a long gun, you've got the shoulder mount and the cheek weld that positions your eye in the same spot every time relative to where the optic is. So you mount the gun and you don't even think about it. The dot is always just right there. With a handgun, we don't have those third and fourth points of contact. The gun is just kind of floating out there in front of us without a solid physical reference point. With iron sights, we can usually see enough of the front sight to kind of clean up our sight, sight picture if we need to. We can't really get away with that when we're using a red dot. If we don't present the gun to exactly the right spot, the dot will not be visible at all when we look through the window. On a pistol that has an optic and iron sights, we can kind of cheat. We can find the irons first and use that as a reference point and look for the dot. That's really not ideal though. It doesn't allow you to take full advantage of the target focus and the speed that you can get from using the dot. The key is to learn how to draw directly to the same spot every time so the dot is just there. Now there are a few different ways to learn how to overcome this issue. I'm not gonna get into that today. Again, you can look up one of those instructors I mentioned earlier for that kind of info. For right now, the question is not whether you can learn to find the dot, it's whether you will. If you're gonna make the transition from irons to optics, you have to be willing to put in some work. Fortunately, most of that work can be done in dry practice, but it takes time and dedication and not everybody wants to commit to that. Another reason this can be challenging is that pistol optics are still a fairly new thing in the firearms training world. If you're struggling with something specifically red dot related, it might be tough to find an instructor locally who has enough experience in that area to really effectively coach you. Okay, now back to that hardware issue, getting a dot on your gun. Assuming you already have a pistol that you carry on a regular basis that you can shoot fairly well, 
ideally you would just add a red dot to that gun. If it doesn't have an optics ready slide like this one, then you will have to find out if there's an optics ready version of it available from the factory, or you look into having a custom shop mill the slide for the gun. For some guns, you can also get an adapter plate that will fit into the existing rear sight dovetail. That's really not an ideal way to mount an optic though, if you can avoid it. At this point, most modern semi-autos can be milled for a red dot sight. It's more expensive and difficult for some models than for others, but it's usually possible. The major exceptions are if you're carrying a true pocket-sized pistol, something like an LCP or even a snub nose revolver, you're probably out of luck. You will have to switch to a different firearm if you wanna try a red dot sight. But in a lot of cases, concealment and comfort might trump having the best sighting system available. That's totally legitimate. Uh, you guys know that I'm a fan of pocket pistols. They make a lot of sense for a lot of different situations. Uh, fortunately, laser sights are available for many of those smaller guns and they will give you some of the same advantages you might get from a red dot optic. That said, in general, if you can, you should probably stick to whatever gun you're already carrying when you try out a red dot. We wanna make this transition as smooth as possible. The switch to a red dot is gonna be much more challenging if you're also switching to a totally different handgun model at the same time. If you have been on the fence about the red dot thing, I hope I have helped you get a little closer to making a decision. I am sure I will have plenty more to say about pistol optics in the future as I continue to learn more about using them myself if you have a question about red dot sites or any other topic you would like me to cover here, be sure to mention it in the comments or even better, send an email to askcb at luckygunner.com. Guys, I don't mean to brag, I don't mean to boast, but I am intercontinental when I eat French toast.